Welcome to the Language of Markets Live. Hey, I said it right again. It's Freaky Friday, the 24th of May. Morning, John. You must be getting old getting up at this hour. You just, oh, it's 4 a.m.? Jeez. You are hardcore. Afternoon, Mark. Hey, Stephen. All right, so just a few, uh, few quick things. So the go to meeting I'm using is a little different. Hey, Adam. I see you over there on go to meeting. Um, you probably don't have Slack, huh? Sent you an invite, but I'll keep an eye on you over there. Adam's been around for a while, but he's old. So he probably doesn't know how to use Slack. But I'll keep an eye on you in go to meeting. <laughs> Very true. Um, I think. You can check your email. I know we sent you an invite. And we'll get you set up either way. But it's good to see you. So anyways, we're using a different, it's, it's go to meeting. But one of the things that will be different, at least for a while, I think, is um, we'll change the link. By the way, this link will be good until we have, get our membership uh, program lined up. And what we'll basically do is we'll have this one single link every month and then we'll change the link same as usual the big difference with this will be that you won't have to do all that filling out and registering and all that stuff the downside is they won't be sending you reminders in the email so a little give or take so we'll get used to it but isn't it a pain in the butt to fill out that registration all the time so we don't need everybody's information every month we know where you live so we'll explain all that as we go. And we're just going to keep using this link until we get the website up and get everybody registered and and you know we know who wants to sign up and who doesn't and all that. And then we'll switch it out. But again, thanks for your patience. You guys can still ask any any questions. Just shoot an email to Wendy or me. Hey Rita, you having trouble with Slack too? All right, I'll keep an eye on the on the panel over here. I'll keep an eye on. You were on Slack the other day. Maybe Wendy can invite you both in the background again. We'll see. All right. So, anyways, let's get started. And oh, Monday. We're off Monday. It's a holiday. Memorial Day and we'll be back on Wednesday doing the same thing and again we're going to just send a link to the recordings each time we do a recording so this shouldn't last forever as soon as we get things up and running um, you know we're trying to take our time with it hey Rita you made it maybe you can talk to Adam he's lonely over there now all right so no questions good good to go ready to work all right, so we got to get back to work. We'll make this transition as easy as possible. But um, we're all here for the trading and the learning anyways, one way or the other. So what we're going to do, like we started the other day, I want to keep working into designing our own trading. Now, you guys got to give me a little time on this because this is an important thing. We're working into designing our own, our own way. And so we started with a little exercise on Wednesday and you know, we'll follow that up a little bit. And we talked about you know, just measuring swings to, to get the hang of the market and to get in tune with the market because we come to the market and we're a bit haphazard. And so we want to not approach trading in a haphazard way and not approach it in a rough discipline way but we have to get in tune we have to get connected to the market the connection is very important and so it's good to build some routine and so we're actually going to try and design some way to do that as not just a morning routine but i want to take this design into how we review markets 
um, how we analyze markets, how we get settled with markets, how we review our trades. And so each person will have a personal unique circumstance and it's important to learn how to design. And so we're starting at the very beginning with just sort of a morning structure to get connected to the market. So you got to give me a little time on this because you know I'm creating with you as we go and we're just inching into it right now. That's all. Okay, so we're going to work on that a little bit. That exercise we did on uh, on Monday was about just getting connected. And I know, Adam, you love that exercise. I don't know if you saw that, but we were just reading price. And I gave you a little bit of homework to do the, the Euro daily, and we'll do some of that today. Oh, you did? Oh, good. We'll, we'll, did you do the Euro daily, Adam? Did you follow it? No. <laughs> That's okay. You do it with me today. You, I know you're busy. You're busy running the world over there. All right, you do it with me today, okay? You're going to hang with me today? He loves this exercise. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, hey, Grace. The odd. Yes, we're going to follow up the odd because I have some important things to say about the odd. This is very exciting, Grace. Thank you. You know, we, we kind of looked at it, right? We kind of looked at it. We did some work, and here's here's the exciting part. We read it, and follow follow this grace. We did not know what was going to happen next. We did not know. We and if you followed it into its whatever it did that we didn't know, and we let them build it, it came out and said, "Boom! Hey, me here right now." And the beauty of it is, we did not know. Right? We did not predict. We had some levels. I'm going to go over that and take that apart a little bit um, from Ricardo's, Ricardo's question. And see, this is how this works. You know, you guys participate. I love you guys for this. And one question leads to something, and we just keep opening things up that, you know, rather than just some dull listen to this lesson all the time. But before we get to that, you guys got to listen to me babble. Because I got a question from somebody, and it was a it was a good question. I got a question from somebody, and I don't even think he's on the list here. I think he's part of the breakfast group. I'm not sure, but you know, I always tell everybody, no matter whether they're on the site, not on the site. I haven't talked to him in six years that they can email me questions and that kind of thing. And this is such a beautiful question, and this is one of the reasons I love teaching. I love the interaction. And so, let me just hit the question here. He says, I like when you talk wisdom in the sessions. Well, I don't know. We have to, there might be a debate on the wisdom part. He says, you always know how to say it. Another debate there, right, Grace? <laughs> I have an interesting question. Why is it that people must cheat in trading, inside info, scams, etc., to achieve wealth. So this is what he's asking. All right, why is it that people must cheat in trading? Are there people that can actually live from trading their own money? So that was his question. I love this question. Yes, or wisdom could mean truth. Yeah, whether I say it very well or not, huh? So I love this question. You know why? This question gets at the heart of what we're trying to do here. So the basic question is, why is it that people must cheat in trading? And he's referring to, you know, all the inside info, the scams, inside. I mean, how many insider trading scandals have there been, right? This is such a juicy question. Now, right off the bat, yeah, Nate says, wow, a whole lot of assumptions in that question. Yeah, you can see where he's coming from, though. But it doesn't matter. We're going to open this guy up because it's at the heart of what we're doing, Nate. And you might not get the direction of this right away. But we're going to open this guy up. At first, you know, when I first heard that question, yeah, my mind went right to you, Adam. I don't know why. <laughs> Adam's got some stories. Um, 
Now, when I first heard this question, when I first heard this, and, and Adam, you you haven't you haven't been here in these sessions. I know you're you're in a different time zone and stuff, but I like to pick on people once in a while. But when I first my first thoughts were this, right? My first thoughts on this was, wow, this is a loaded question. And my mind went all over the place. And I thought, you know, this is a human condition question. This is one of those questions where we need to go get with Gary at his pub, you know, and discuss it for, you know, a complete night. You know, it's one of those kind of questions. But then I thought about it a little more. So why is it? that people must cheat in trading. You, let me open this up. You guys got, got any input on this? What do I know? And then I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I think about it. Nate says, I get belligerent at the pup. That's the perfect place for a human condition question, Nate. Pub, the cafes, none of them know what they're talking about. And Grace gets happy. Nate gets belligerent. Yeah, you guys would be a lot of fun, wouldn't you? I seen some of you at the trading show. <laughs> As Wes was buying everybody scotches. All right. Anybody got any input on this? So why is it that people must cheat in trading? Taking advantage of opportunities, legal or not, is human nature, it seems. Yeah, that's. I would go with that. I'm just open for input here. I always like to get other input and because it's not like I know it all. Adam says most can't trade. Adam, you're getting really close to where I'm where I'm going to go. Really close, Adam. I don't know about the cheating part, but it's a good question about trading your own money. What? Are there people that can actually live from trading their own money? Yeah. I don't know. That's a side question. Maybe. If none of us thought that, why were we going to be here in the first place? Maybe we're all cheating. Edward knows more than a few. All right, so any more input on, on, on the why about this? Because I'm going to dig into it just a little bit because the way I see it, it gets at the heart of what we're doing. It really does. It gets at the heart of what we're doing here. And it's worth talking about a little bit. And then we'll, we'll, we'll get to work. You know, the, really the only way to, uh, to answer that question Nate says, I must be in the minority not thinking there's as much insider trading as there used to be or could be. Just Google it, Nate, and you'll see what comes up. I mean, right off the top of my head, I'm thinking about that congressman not too long ago and all the other congressmen and some of the big funds and the, that got wrapped up not that long ago and pharmaceutical companies in Australia. I mean, it, it goes on and on. That's just what we know about. That's just what we know about. That's just what we know about. And uh, Congress seems to have made it legal by just putting themselves on the board. But anyways, the only way to truly answer this question, and actually thank God for the cheating. You can think about it this way. Markets discount the future. I mean, we're not just talking about markets here. We're talking about li all aspects of life. We're going all the way back in history. You can go, go back to Babylon. Even HFT is cheating in a way, front-running orders. Well, you know, that's a certain game. Of course they are trying to cheat, yeah. And, you know, before HFT high-frequency trading, what they would do is hold your orders, Evan, and then trade against you. And so there's always a little bit of that, but he's talking about outright cheating. All right, but the only way to really answer this question is to look deep inside ourselves, really. Only we could answer this question individually for ourselves. It's true. That is the only way to really answer that question. Because I'm not just talking about 
trading here. This, this, this condition is in all aspects of life. Better to focus on trading and not what they're doing. I agree, Stephen, but this is something worthy to think about. That's why I'm bringing it out. See, that was kind of my first response. You know, don't worry about others because he's kind of worried about being cheated. You know, those guys did that to me. The markets are manipulated. Thank God they're manipulated. It makes it easier to see. Ah, what is cheating? All right, hear me out. Hear me out. And Adam hit it. The simple answer that gets to the heart of this and what we're doing is that any of us, anybody cheat, we cheat because we don't know how to trade. Because we're afraid to fumble along and learn and be wrong and find our way in the unknown. So we cheat because we don't know how to trade. And I'm not just talking about markets. I'm talking about trading in life. Trading and life isn't different. Managing life, flowing with life. We find certain systems, right? Or ways of being, a steady job, and education will protect us. Everything in life is a trade. And by the way, with life, no matter how much you try to pin it down, life will always change just like markets. I mean, look at me. Last week I was settled doing something, and this week, right, I'm learning about websites and deciding about all sorts of weird things and all of that stuff. And it's been interesting, too, because I had everything sort of set. I knew what buttons to push, what, which websites to go. We had the whole thing like a system, right? It was nice and clean and easy. Knew how to get the videos up and knew the website system and all that. And I'm finding myself this week having to triple check everything I do because it's a little bit different and I got all mechanical with it. But think about what I'm saying here. It's because we don't know how to trade. We look for a system. Life will always change just like markets, always. Sometimes we'll be riding easy. Everything will seem secure. But, you know, sickness will happen, death, loss of job. You have to go bail your kid out of jail. Something will turn you on your head. And how well do you flow with it? Or are you still using some sort of old system for it? Listen, we all, the reason I said we have to look inside, because we all cheat to some degree. All of us. I know I'm getting out of the insider trading thing. But, you know, there's simple answers to that, you know. They got money, they want to protect it. But. We all cheat to some degree. Have you ever bent the truth a little bit personally while talking to somebody? Maybe tried to make yourself look a little better in some way or craft your image in there? Anybody ever done that? Yeah, come on. That's cheating. And so you ask, why do I do that? I do that. We all do it. See, as a trader, we look at these things. And so... Even trying to find a system, I don't think you guys are all hearing me on this. Power, ego, sure, but we all, we all have it, Rita. But even trying to find a system for trading is like cheating. Do you guys get me? Even trying to find the system to memorize and to learn for trading is like cheating. It's not going, right? You get it, Winston? It's not going into the unknown. It's not what Adam said. It's not real trading. It's n And the same thing in life. We have our little systems. It's not real flowing with life. We have our little protections. Everything needs to be hunky-dory. Hell, I was all set doing my thing. You know, up until a week ago, things change. I either roll with it or I don't. I had a little system going with everything. I was kind of nice and comfy. I had time, you know, my trading, time to really immerse myself. I love the teaching. And then, boom, life will always change. Markets will always change. So, actually, the mind that can understand trading and change in markets will serve us in life. That's the beauty. There is no difference. 
this training here in going with change and not just trying to hang on to a system. See, hanging on to a system is really no different than cheating. You're trying to find some way to manage the unknown, trying to cheat your way through it. Uh, you always hear me say you cannot cheat the risk man, ever. The markets are flowing, they're moving, they're changing. The statistics won't help you. Little green and red buy signals won't help you. Even those methods I tell you don't work are only there to help you get connected to the market so that it's not you over here and the market over there. It's a connection. It's just one connection. And so one of the reasons we all, and we all, me included, every day we're trying to cheat a little bit, find some way to know what's the secret sauce. What's the holy grail? What's the line that will tell me what to do? I can draw a very nice action-reaction set based on a structure. See, you see what I'm doing in the pound here. I can draw a press. I can do all this. I can predict this like magic. But if I lean on that prediction rather than use it to measure and as a reference point, now I'm using it as a system and I'm trying to cheat. I'm trying to cheat. I'll end up in jail. I'll end up in trouble because the markets are always changing. It's a subtle thing, if you get me. And so if we keep digging down into this, why we do such things, it's because, well, we have trouble trading. Actual, real, this is the heart of what I'm doing here. I want real trading. Real trading in the unknown. Not knowing what to do. Discovering what to do. Hmm, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. What, ah, okay, I'll take my chances here. I don't know. Does this work or not? We'll see. I'll take, I know what I'm doing. I'll take my chances. That's not cheating. We're trading based on reading their story. That's real trading, and it's very difficult. It's skill. It's ability. It's very difficult to do real trading. And that's at the heart of what we're going here because I can teach you how to use median lines. I can, I, hell, I already taught you how to do this off of this structure, but this isn't going to work every time. It, it's, it's not going to work. You have to bring a presence and a connection. You have to actually trade. And if you look at our lives, the same thing applies. The more we're present with our lives, the better decisions we'll make. The more trading we'll do. The more we don't get hung up on this is always this way because I've been doing this for the last 10 years. The more you're free to flow and move into your next chapter or whatever. People want to avoid having to make difficult choices on their own. That includes me, John, right? Is that you too? See, I'll say people, but I'll include me and that makes it even more personal. Then, ah, yeah. That's why I said you got to look inside, of course, right? It sounds a little different when you say I do too. And if we keep going down and follow John's path here, one of the reasons we do that is because, now I'm talking all the internal side of trading now, it's because we're scared to lose. We're scared to be wrong and we're scared to look bad, which is the same reason we bend the truth a little bit when we're talking to somebody and make ourselves we present ourselves in a certain way. Maybe we don't do it a lot. Maybe we don't do it so much always. But if you look, every one of us has done it. We try to craft somebody else's image in their eye, or our image in their eyes. Why? Right? We want to look good. We don't want to look bad. We are scared to lose. We're scared to be wrong. We're scared to look bad. This is just wired into us. The problem with all that. I'm getting more to the punchline now, is when we're scared to lose and be wrong, it's almost impossible to learn. That's when we look for, let's pray to the God of statistics. Let's pray to this method that somebody's got statistics on. Because we're scared. Because we don't think we can trade ourselves, which is what Adam brought up. Right off the bat, he saw that. It's very difficult to trade yourself without relying on somebody else's method and looking. It's very difficult 
without saying, do I know for sure this will hold? I don't know. I always tell you guys, I don't know. Read the market, pays your money, take your chances, and learn. This is all about learning. See, this whole learning thing, everything my teacher. I mean, look at, we are learning machines. The mind is the most powerful thing in, in the universe. I mean, we are learning machines. But as we got to be adults, you know, we stopped. Think about a little kid learning to walk. You know how many millions of impulses are firing to learn to walk? He's tripping all over the place. Now, when you see a little kid, he runs and he falls on his face. Does he look back self-consciously worried about if anybody's looking at him? Ooh, do I look bad? No. Watch your kids when they do that. No. That's why he can learn so quick or she can learn so quick. They're not worried about being wrong. They're not worried about tripping and falling. They're not worried about looking bad. As they get a little older, you start to see it. But So there's a very important you know, concept we can adopt here, and that is to embrace our own imperfections and trip and learn along the way. Because we are never going to know no matter how. I still look for ways to know myself. I always catch myself. I mean, this is pretty good, right? This is our press that we were doing. Mm -hmm. Zoom, swap, boom, new high. It's pretty good. The action reaction line is pretty cool too. Edward's glad he's ugly. He doesn't have to worry about how he looks. <laughs> but you still do. But I, I won't argue with you. <laughs> Not too much. Yeah, see, me and I, we'll just start off with the with the premise that we're already goofballs, right? And we don't have to worry too much. And we then we don't have too much to protect, do we? We're already goofballs. So something to think about. All right. The only way to really answer that question is to look inside. And it, it has to do with life. And the reason, again, is because we don't know how to trade or we don't really know how to I mean, nobody really taught us. We don't really know how to completely live half the time. Some of us do better than others. You know, we want to rely on steady jobs and education or steady systems or beliefs. Or It hey, looks like this person knows what he's doing. I'll follow him. But the truth is, it's so ever-changing. It's so ever-changing. That you know you gotta you gotta work it on the fly, really. And it's no different here. You gotta work it on the fly. All right. So I thought I'd bring that up because it's a big thing, really. And it always it still comes down to. Even right now, we all are still looking for some kind of a, a system. Yeah, it's a steady illusion that seems to work for that moment. But we always get disappointed, don't we? And it's the same thing. I'll show something like these presses, John, and I'll tell you they don't work or not work. They're very good reference points. And then you'll see them you know, do a type 3 quite often. But the minute you, while it's a very good piece of structure based on supply and demand imbalances and a very good marker, but the minute and some of you know this, some of you maybe haven't tasted this yet or haven't recognized it. But the minute you start to use it mechanically, you'll lose touch and connection, and everything will fall apart and you'll go look for the next system. And the only thing that went wrong was the way you approached it. And you didn't approach it out of a sense of discovery and curiosity and not knowing. And that's the only thing that went wrong because you will fall out of grace with it is what happens. You will, see, this is to help get us connected. And when I say connected, I mean there's not you and them, two separate things. You're not opposing them in any way. Sometimes we look at the market, we're like, oh, my God, there's this big thing against us. No, connected is something different than that. Okay, and so we, you know, we become present with what we're doing, and then the tool really does work for you, and you can use it in a lot of creative ways. 
So sometimes, you know, you can just look at a market, and you've seen me do this. I did this with a student on Tuesday. We just looked at this euro. You know, we were doing all kinds of lessons. We just looked at this euro and said, oh, this is what it's doing. Just out of the blue, we just looked, right? Nothing fancy, no projections, no special techniques. Just, oh, look, this is what it's doing. It's going down. Just watch that guy. You know, if we got in here and, you know, we threw a stop some, some 20 ticks or so. You see that? That's a money maker. That's trading. That is living by your wits. Oh, I see an opportunity. I see a niche that needs to be filled. I see an opening. And that just came from connection is all that came from. See? Not, we can take it apart. There's all sorts of interesting things going on here. But the truth is, we're here to trade, and you're not going to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect. And, you know, the minute we start to really get that, we're a little bit more free to learn and not worry about who's manipulating the markets and all that kind of jazz. That's really easy. That's money. You know, I can write up a whole bunch of secret lines in here. I can find the, the median lines that do their thing, right? I mean, we can go like this. We can use one of these methods. How about this? I can say, oh, look, we've done the same size swing. Continued behavior. And, oh, there's this sloped coil that we're washing. I can do a trade with a 20 tick stop or something. Phil says, I'm always trying to have the perfect line. Cheating. Yeah. See, perfection is another way of cheating. Some of us have that bent of being perfectionist. And that's also can be turned into another way of trying to, you know, make everything just perfect for ourselves. And I try to find the perfect line, too. But you guys see me in these sessions. I have gravitated towards less teaching the magic lines and more, hey, draw a line and trade. Or let's talk about how to get ourselves settled so that we can see the market. Because the truth is, you know, once we learn the push-ups and the techniques and how these tools work, the truth is once we get our minds settled, boom we'll be able to see what we need to see. Just, you know, we'll trip a little bit, we'll fumble a little bit, just like the kid learning to walk. But we are the same learning machine that a little kid is. You know, we block it because we get all self-conscious about things. But like Phil said, it's good to notice that you're doing that kind of thing. You don't have to do anything about it, right, Phil? You just start to notice and it starts to, starts to fall off like a, like a, like a fruit that's ripe, it just goes on its own. Maybe you put a little discipline in there, but eventually it just drops on its own without too much, too much struggle. And then you laugh about it a little bit. There I am getting anal again, trying to find the perfect everything. And it's okay. My teachings helped open your eyes. Yeah, mine too. Oh, helped open my eyes too. And it's okay to find the perfect line. There's nothing wrong with trying to apply precision. It's how we approach it that matters, if you guys get that. If we approach it from a fear-based mentality, eh, it's not going to work very well. If you approach finding the perfect line in a more open way, hey, I'm looking to you know improve my skills. But I'm not going to be completely attached to it because I'm scared to death. So attitude and intent is a lot when it comes to trading. And then, you know, I'm just here guiding. You know, I'll give you my little lessons. Like I come in here and looked at the euro today and I said, yeah, I got no idea. I started drawing. You know, I started messing around. I started drawing. I said, you know, I just have no idea. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to admit when you got no clue. I started drawing. Boom, didn't do anything. 
Maybe I got the, I had no idea. There's no, so I leave it alone. It's as easy as that. I was more connected to the pound. Because the pound laid out some organized behavior in here that helped me see, that helped me get it. That helped me, you know, again, I'll use my tools. Hmm. Okay, about that. Oh, look, we beat that. Huh. And is this the perfect entry? Is this the perfect one? You know, again, don't be too cheap. Don't be too cheap. Maybe there is no good entry in here. Maybe you take your chances with a cash stop. Either way, you know, I want, if if you don't do a trade, you know, I would still like you to have the ability through some of the things I teach to read, because we teach how to do this, to read, oh, look, sellers, sellers, sellers. Look, sellers, wham. Okay, look, ah, some intention. Pull back, so I want you to have the ability to read. Gaps is looking interesting, yeah. This is the big boy in this market here, hasn't it? And what is this? A great big tail. It's a great big fat tail. But that's next week's business. All right, so I do want to talk about this Aussie, and then we'll get to some of the homework. And I want to maybe introduce how to do a little bit of review so let's just because this was a good good thing Ricardo asked a simple question about if I sell there would I be guessing and he was looking at this and we were live somewhere in here hey Ricardo do you see when price expand it almost where it's same major down when price takes out the 2670, I thought that was like buying into sellers on the pound. Let's take a quick look. When price takes out the 2670, buying into sellers, buying in. You know, if you bought here, okay, when I say buying into sellers, you know, don't buy into sellers, don't sell into buyers. So let's clarify this. And then we'll go back to the Aussie. Draw a MDF down from the major. What's an MDF? You introducing new terminology to me? And by the way, I'm going to make a clickable, linkable glossary. Like that. Oh, a modified shift? Like that? That about it? I see it. All right, cool. Now and then I get I, I, I get one. <laughs> All right, so let's get rid of this. Mike says I could do a seminar on buying into sellers. And I got your question, Mike. I'm saving it, by the way. Okay, so I imagine, Ricardo, you're talking about these sellers here. Am I correct when you're talking about, you know, you don't want to buy into sellers? These guys right here? Off this line? So you're not wanting to buy into those guys? Am I correct in your, your assumption? So you're not wanting to buy into those guys? Now, Phil says type three. Well, first we have to see what sellers he's talking about, what, what, what it's relative to. And then we'll open up this subject about buying or selling into one or the other. Later, after the swap in the press, it's making miners up. Okay, so it's making, it's making miners up, right? All right? So it's making minor swings. Right? It's making minor swings up. 
And so if we bought here, you're not buying into sellers. So let me let me just first talk about buying into sellers real quick. Yeah, you know, if I'm looking at swings here, as Nate mentioned, right, the swing got taken out. And if you're talking about this line, this is a line in space. It's a projection, so we can't call this line sellers. We can call this line a projection, right? It's it's imaginary. It's projected. It's a good projection, but we can't call it sellers. Now, whenever I'm talking about buying into sellers, and that is probably not a good idea, I'm talking about you got this steady flow down, right? You got this push, you got this gap. Now, let's say you have a really good idea that this thing is about to punch through. And so, as Mike O knows, we get real tempted in this, especially if we're busy or we have a job and we have to go to work or we're out of time and we want to do a trade. See, we want to, we're predicting, that, yes, it does look like a turn. This does look like a turn. And so, but these are known. These are known sellers. Not only did we press gap, we retested. These are, these are sellers here. One way or the other, you know, we're looking at these, these sellers in here. And so one of the things we always want to be careful about doing, or at least be able to make the distinction of, is am I buying right into this guy here? Am I buying, am I trying to buy right into sellers? Because often it'll look really juicy in here. It'll look really juicy. And so even if you do want to, this ain't the place to do it. Pete says, if marking that gap, would I mark the top third? Yeah, you could do that too, Pete. See, it, it does the same thing, right? You see? It's creating the same same idea. So you could just mark the gap, Pete, especially since you probably weren't here for the press lessons. But either way, it'll give you the same the same idea. So a gap is projecting a valley, and we know they threw them off the cliff here. So buying here is generally, ugh, it gets real tempting. I've done it a thousand times myself because I want to be in. It's, it's how the try trade gets invented, actually. Because it's one of the things you'll find, as juicy as this looks, as afraid you are as it's going to miss, generally, this puppy will pull back a little bit. Generally, this thing will pull back off of this a little, even if it's going to go. Now, in worst practices that we can do is just to keep on trying to buy these things. Like for the Aussie, if you kept trying to buy these things for the last six months, you got hammered whether you bought it anywhere because they just kept on holding. But let's say you're here in the pound and you know what? You're willing to take a chance. You guys tell me. Instead of buying it here, if you wanted to, what you're doing is you want to play for a push through here. If you want to do that, where's a better place to buy it? Just look at the chart and read it, please. Where's a better place to think about buying this thing? Somewhere after the swap, right? See, here's their big gap. It's zooming something. And so a better place to think about buying it will either be, you know, down in here, just thinking out loud, or even you can fine-tune the gap swap right there. Poof. And so this would be buying into sellers if you bought it up here. It's hard to get this across if you've never done this before. I've been so certain that this market was going to go up right here that I've bought this. And then what do you think happens when it does this down here? I jump out. 
Ricardo says, I understood the projection line is not sellers. Thanks. It will be useful from now on. But when prices like that, in that case, making little swings up after a swap and then expand, I doubt it's making another major down. Well, let's just read it, Ricardo. All right. We'll just read it from here. We'll just read it with our tools and we'll see where we land. You know, we're never going to um, find the perfect solution. I mean, there's always going to be warts to any trade. There's always going to be risk. But let's do our best to read it and see what we see. All right. So we have a swing. I'm off on this subject about buying into sellers because we can use that later. Okay. Now we're making some swings. Okay. We have a we have a last swing broke swing by the way. Gaps are always swings. We have a last swing broke swing. So these would be minors. That would be the major. So let's just keep reading it. We're just reading it. The major's still down. Okay. The major's still down. Price is making these miners on the way up. Price, not by a lot, but I can tell you one thing. They didn't step down. They took them out, just probed it, but they didn't step down. So I can see that. So now I can think, well, is it a possibility to buy this somewhere along this swing? And Phil says, look at that tail, right? You start to see these things after a while. So I'm dicing this out. So the little swing, the little red swing got busted, right? The market is essentially, eh, it's flat, but it, it turned up a little bit, even though it only poked it. You're always going to find a hiccup. You'll never find, I mean, sometimes like the ES has been pretty clean for weeks now really but you're always going to find something that's not perfect there's no way to work every little rule so we know we've beaten the minor swings okay so maybe this is a minor into the to the bigger one here I'd be willing to possibly put my money on this and see what kind of a stop I could afford in this pound you know maybe a 30 tick stop or so does, does this make sense Ricardo see even though we broke the minor swing we're falling into this this bigger LSB so minor swings will often watch you know if the markets doing this if the markets doing this okay and it's making these minor swings on the way up. In order to do a whole new major swing, Ricardo, these miners are going to have to get busted. And if we think the way is tilting up, that's okay. If the way is tilting down, we might use that as a confirmation to get short. But you see, in this case, the way is tilting upwards. Does that make sense? Yes, you get it? It's kind of subtle. I like the way you guys are picking up on this. I'm glad we have such a such a clean crew that's been around. I mean, we need to talk about this stuff some more. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of little unsaid things here. So it's tilting up. If it was tilting down, Ricardo, if it was tilting down like this, and we start doing like this, and we don't make a new high, and then we break then you know what I'm going to consider the break of that minor I mean it's not a done deal but I'm going to consider it like that but if the markets tilting up well I expect the minor to break because miners have to grow up to be big boys they have to grow up to be majors so there's a there's a little bit of a difference there and that's where all our training starts to come in so we start to see it and experience it and get it And so in this case, as I look at this, I'm thinking, you know what? I might be willing to take my chances here. This looks like a big old fat monster pivot wash and rinse. 
it looks like I could probably get all the way back to this guy. And that's a three to one. And so you see how it gets put together, created uniquely in this situation from a read. And some reads are harder than others, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't learn. It doesn't mean we shouldn't learn. Look, if we do this very simply, we can go like this. There's a big boy. There's a minor, right, Ricardo? There's a minor. Did our minor get beat? Ah, something's changed there. Something's changed. So we might draw something like this. Ah, something, something has definitely changed there. The swing is going bigger. And then I can put two and two together with the gap and the gap swap or, or like it was mentioned. And then I can consider, oh, something changed enough. Do I have, now these are minors. Do I have enough juice? To think about a trip to the median line. See, now I'm using my tools. Do I have enough juice to make a trip up here to the median line to perhaps this size? See, that's what that's all that's what the median line measures. And so I look and it looks like I've got a turn. It looks like an indication. I know this is this is harder than learn this system but I'm putting a lot together you know in truth all you really needed was to see this swap and to see this swap see it can be made easy guys okay two simple tools ah something's changed no guarantees so in this case Ricardo if I bought anywhere in here I'm not buying into sellers I got room see if a market's doing like this all right if a market's doing like this and I buy here I'm buying into these sellers and price is liable to bump and then rip so here I'm not buying into sellers. Here you're buying into sellers. Same thing if you turned around and said, ah, the market's going down and you sold it right here, you're selling, you know, into these buyers that, you know, have just proven themselves. And so it's something to think about because this happens. The place we get really hung up is when, you know, price goes into some kind of a, some kind of a range. So this is where we get hung up and if price gets in some kind of a range and it looks all juicy right here we want to buy now into say known you know known sellers because it's got juicy it's an emotional thing that happens and it's never a good idea to do it it's the same it's it's the same idea about swings by the way Go away. Uh oh man, since we're gonna. So whenever I draw swings and I say swing, swing, it's a never good idea. Don't buy here. Buy here. Don't buy here. Buy here. Or don't sell here. Sell here. Don't sell here. Sell here. So it's all a very interesting interesting idea I don't know what happened there okay I think I got rid of it okay so interesting little whoa interesting little lesson and you know working on our ability to read I want to make sure we have time to take apart the euro and I'm going to go over that Aussie too because it's kind of exciting all right so we left this Aussie we left this Aussie over here and the beauty of this, right? And again, Ricardo knows. He asked, right? Would it be guessing 
if I sold this here? And this is an important understanding I want everybody to have. I'm okay if you want to sell that here, there. But if you sell that there, you're selling the try. You're selling a market that's, that's working its way up. You're selling a market that's working its way up. And so the most important thing I want you to know is what you're doing when you're doing it. This is so important to trading. This is so important to real trading to know because you can make these distinctions. You know what you're doing while you're doing it. If you do that, fine, document it, check it out. But I want you to know what you're doing while you're doing If you want to buy this, you're also going to know that, right, this is a major swing down and you're buying this down in here for, you know, maybe possibly at least something like that. Is there any guarantee with either? No, but I can tell you the facts, Jack. If you sell these little ripples now, the swings are going up. How do I know? Because we've all learned how to do some swings around here. We've all learned how to do higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows, right? It's tilting up. If you sell it there, you're selling the try. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm saying know the difference. That's all. And then you can be responsible for it. Oh, it didn't work. Then I'm not responsible for it anymore. And this way, you know, if it makes money, you made money. If it loses money, you lose money. If you make money, it's not because of me. Same thing if you lose money. I'll, you know, I don't take the credit either way. We all have to make this trip ourselves, but we want to know. Now, this is the exciting thing about this, if you guys watched it. Did you see it through its paces, Grace? Did you see it? Watch it, and you're wondering. You don't know what's going to happen, okay? You're in the unknown. This is the important part. This isn't no magic lines. No, oh, my God, look, I have a test, retest, so I can do it. Ah, I have a test, so I can do it. No, 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 no. This is we don't know what's going to happen, so let's watch. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have the secret sauce. I'm not building a system. I don't know if it'll, you, may, you remember how I left it. I said, well, if it comes up here and gives us something interesting, then we'll move. We let it at the tail you draw. Uh, yeah, somewhere, yeah, we did the session somewhere in here, right? Somewhere, somewhere we left it, right, right in that neighborhood, right? I know we marked that guy and right in that neighborhood someplace, but we, I don't know. And I'm saying, this is the hard part of trading. This is the hard part of living. We, we need to be able to work with whatever gets thrown at us because we're not going to know what's getting thrown at us. Does that make some kind of sense? This is real trading, not cheating. We need to be able to, actually wait, see what's thrown at us, learn to recognize opportunity via our structures, not our setups, and be able to work and recognize, ah, there's the telegram. But we don't know ahead of time, and we all want to know ahead of time. We can do projections. I mean, we do some pretty good projections around here. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, right off the bat, when I'm doing this, I go like this. And I go like this. I say, all right, looks like the red got beat. Now what? We have sellers. We have buyers. So we watch. So you guys watch it with me. And we'll see what we can put together here. So later that night, slowly we turn, step by step, <laughs> inch by inch. What is that, Niagara Falls? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking bedtime story too, Grace. You caught right onto that. I was getting ready to do a bedtime story, and I switched over to Niagara. <laughs> You're in tune. And so we watched, right? Boring, 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 boring. I mean, I was busy Wednesday night, but I watched it out of the corner of my eyes. I watched it, right? Boring, boring. And... And... Huh? And so I'm thinking, oh, okay, this level isn't going to hold. Oh, okay, this level isn't going to hold. 
It's not like we zoomed it yet. Um, hmm. Hmm. Didn't make a new low. Okay. But now I'm done watching it. But let's watch. Now let's do a little. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but you can use this. But if you notice, we we have another little press. And we can ask, I mean, this might be made up in my head. All right. I see it. I see I see it pressed down from here and then expand. But this might be made up in my how will I know, right? If I'm up here trading the the you know, Geneva or European hours, how will I know if this is a decent level? So right now I'm predicting it's a decent level. Or I'm predicting it's some level. How will I know? Right? If it gets zoomed or what? So if it gets zoomed, that gives me some information. Or if it holds and bounces, right, Grace? If it holds and comes off, it's like, holy cow, real sellers. See it stall and come down and pivot? And it's like, ah, confirmed. You guys, you guys get that? Price is going down. Price is going down. Period. The end. Price is starting to make these little swings here. See that? Everybody see that? Price is going down, and maybe we'll make a new low. See, I do not. I did not know this would happen. I didn't have the pretty lines. I mean, my line went like this. It's busted. All right, we're going for new lows. Now watch. Can we all not deny that these are sellers? 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 Even if you didn't know how to, you see them. You just mark it anyways. Can you put an ML on it? You can start to, you know what I do? Because sometimes I'll go like this and I'll start to put an ML. I'll start to put an ML here, Mike. And maybe the whole thing hasn't done it yet. I'll start to put an ML here, and I'll also look at a downward ML. This one's too steep, but I'll probably, you know, I'll probably do something. I'll either do this one. You know, the structure's kind of messy. You know, in my book, in my book, this is all, in my book, it's a little subtle, but this is all the same structure, so I'm probably drawing something like this to measure it, Mike, like that, okay? But you can draw it downward, and you can start to think about an upward, although I don't have much hope for it at this point. But I do see sellers. Let them build it. Now we bleed that. Now from here, you can use a sliding parallel, or you can move it over. But it looks, looks like it's going to roll for me. So I'm probably not even bothering with this, Mike. It just looks like it's done. See, swing, swing. Sellers again, outside bar, I'm not too excited. Sellers, sellers, ah, this is what I mean again. Don't buy into sellers. <clears throat> sellers. Ha! Ah, zoom. Well, what about this level, though? Hmm, I'm confused now. All right. Y'all still confused? Do you guys see it? Do you guys get it? Y'all still confused? No, right? Boom! Hit me. See it? Whoosh! Solid sellers, solid sellers, they got squished. Squished. This is price reading. I had no idea price would do this. I kind of thought it would lift from here, to tell you the truth. But watch this, guys. Watch this. This is what I mean by, you know, embrace imperfection. Let's say I wanted to buy this, and I thought about it. I haven't done any trades this week. 
I didn't, you know, I've got too much going on. But I thought about it. Let's say I want to buy this and I want to get a, a stop underneath. You know, and I'm going to use a 20, I'm not going to go any less than 20 tick, okay? I'm going to use a 20 tick stop. And price does this. And I'm smart like Edward. I'm going to say, you take me out. Okay. Did I get stopped? See, did I, did I get, if I entered here on these buyers, did I get stopped? No. You entered on these buyers, Grace? Ah, cool. I ain't trading against you anymore. That's for sure. You should have sent me a telegram. And so, congratulations, right? You didn't, you didn't, okay, you didn't, maybe you got the telegram, maybe you got the message here. Maybe you got the whole feel for the thing. And, but just by using intelligent methods, intelligent discipline, intelligent money management, um, and a little bit of discipline of not jumping around, you still made money. Right? It still gave you a little leeway because you, maybe, you, know, you had the right direction overall. Right? You saw swings going up. So it gave you a little leeway. It gave you a little, little room to you know, not be perfect. But this trade works. It's the same money. Okay? Now you get a telegram. But either way, I want you to read it. But beautiful job. Beautiful job. You didn't jump out, did you? No, you didn't. It's a good thing you're busy. <laughs> so, you know, we want to learn from that kind of thing. But either way, do you see the levels? If, if you just forget about this and look at what we did. Okay, look at what we did. We found those freaking sellers. And maybe not the best trade in the world but you come down here and you know you do a 20 did it this get stopped no do you really now have a good idea of which way it's going yes see this is trading i don't know if i can get this across to you guys this was the unknown this is the beauty right then you can draw the line for target if you want watch ah okay you know if you get in somewhere around here and you do do you then you do what you want there. Can can throw a pullback median line as it makes a new high? A pull. You mean like this one? Ah, good eye, good eye, Nate. Right? I'm glad you reminded me. I, I know these are my lessons. I, <laughs> I know <laughs> Nate. Nate does this to me once in a while. He he throws my own simple lessons. I forget back at me. The simple ones. This is just you know making pullbacks. Throw a, throw a pendulum, we call this a pendulum median line. It's measuring about where price is going to go. Good eye. And I'm glad I get reminded. I mean, I just kind of see these things automatically, but I got to remember to teach them too. Ricardo, I got stopped out selling the odds, then I understood I was in the wrong side of the boat, so I placed the buy orders. Price got there with the tail, but no fill and tried three ticks. That's beautiful, Ricardo. You got stopped out. You sold with those guys, okay? You got stopped, and then you didn't cry in your milk and say, oh, look, a telegram. Let me buy. That, that's trading. That's trading. All right? You're never going to always be perfect, but that's trading. The only thing I would, I would add to your, um, your review of this trade and we're going to do several review lessons here. But the only thing I would add to your review of this trade is that you sold, okay, you sold. What information did you have when you sold either here or here? What information did you have? I mean, you might have sold here or you might have sold here. What information did you have? And this is what I want you to see in your review work because it will factor into your trading. And then we're going to do our price action work on the Euro daily. I just want you to see this. What information did you have here when you sold here that you don't have to stick your head in the sand with? I want you to know what you're about when you're trading. Do you know, Ricardo? What information do you have about this 
this swing when you sell here or here. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying know what you're about. Because this factors into, you know, our moving with life and trading. So everybody should see we have certain information if we want to sell. I mean, there's a couple pieces of information. One piece of information is, you know, we're nowhere near reaching that. The other piece of information is what? We didn't make a new low. We didn't make a new low. You sold May 22nd. Oh, so you might have sold on the way down. Okay. But either way, I'm glad you read it. And I'm just adding a little lesson here anyways. This is a lesson in which way is the flow going? You know, let's figure out which way the flow is going. And then we can start talking about trades and stuff. And there's no shame in getting stopped out. I've told you guys, I've had 10, 15 stops in a row. No big deal. No big deal. All right, so let's do a little little work based on what I gave you. So I'm going to switch gears here. Again, we're going to keep these lessons a little bit loose until we get everything nice and settled with the website and get me nice and settled. But just as a reminder, um, this particular bar by bar lesson was you know a way for us to get connected it's just reading the price and just way for us to originally get connected to the market so you know we're not so scattered it's not necessarily to grab the trade but we want to get connected and we're going to use a basic price key you know we're going to look at gaps we're going to look at hard up we're going to look at tails outside bars and anything else that just happens to be interesting we're going to look at multi pivot lines and the key to this little exercise is discovery. So what you're going to want to do is get rid of much of the left. And you want to treat this like traders and not cheaters, right? You want to not know what's going to happen and then discover what's going to happen. And this brings a whole new dynamic to your focus and everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk this through to current. And then we're going to follow it. And who knows? If we see something, maybe trade it. Hey, John, I've had 32 consecutive stops in a row, but still live. You know what? If you're taking little hits, you're still live and ready to learn, right? And thank you for, for, for saying that. You know, nobody wants to look bad and say, I've had 32. I don't know if I've done 32. You might have me beat there. I'm not sure. I know I've done 20. But at some point, you start to lose the fear, you know, and say, all right, you know, let's just keep at it. Keep your size low. And always good lessons. Always good lessons. You're the record to beat? All right, we'll put John up there as the record to beat. <laughs> um. I have I have a whole nother conversation about that, John. All right, I have a whole nother conversation about that um, because that's hard on a trader. So we'll save that. We'll save that. Grace says she has a recent similar experience and more than still alive. Looks like you did pretty good in the Aussie. So it looks like you snapped out of it. It's exciting when you snap out of it, isn't it? So we'll we'll talk about that. But let's do this price bar. But thanks, John. All right, so outside bar, okay? We got this. We got this outside bar, and I already put up the the price key, didn't I? I already did the price key. Yeah. So we're just looking at just normal, easy things, and whatever looks interesting, we are going to mark. All right, so let's follow this guy out. Good money management. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you guys can keep your size low. 
then you're free to learn, right? It doesn't feel too good on the ego, but... And you know what? I feel you. You're not doing anything I haven't done, but I don't think I did 32, so you might have beat me there. I might have done it in a more stylish way, though, John. I'm not sure. In a more crazy way. So we'll see. We'll have to compare notes sometime. All right. So whenever you get an outside bar, It's it's one of those things. It's it's and we can relate that to life. It, it comparing war wounds. It's one of those things in life. Is um, how well do you handle when things aren't going your way? You know, it's real easy to be the happy person when things are going your way and life's all good. Sometimes those people are annoying, aren't they? It's real easy to be happy, but you know, can you smile when life ain't going so good for you? It's one of those things, right? It's all easy to be the happy-go-lucky, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are annoying when everything's rolling your way. But life changes. Life won't always roll. How do you handle life when things ain't rolling your way? Can you still smile when everything's looking really bad? Edward says, I might beat you guys back when I was doing 30, 40 round turns on a day. Yeah, but you were oblivious. You didn't even know. <laughs> I don't remember getting old. All right, so let's watch this. You with me, Adam, still? Or did you get bored yet? I think Adam got bored with me. All right. So whenever you get something interesting, and don't worry. All right, cool. When If, if your marking is no good, it's no good. It's not about being good or bad. It's just a marking. We're going to mark interesting things like gaps and outside bars and multi-pivot lines and swings. And we just want to watch what price does in relation to them without getting too attached to it. I'm not doing trade analysis here. This is all learning and getting connected. So I watch. Okay, we're testing the outside bar. Okay, we've zoomed the outside bar. We've swapped the outside bar. My mind is immediately going up. But I'm going to be very discovery here okay we're testing the swap oh we just zoomed back through the swap okay now I'm learning something just from that guess what I've learned that I can't buy every swap as a system because obviously this one isn't working See, that's learning, and we need to personally learn those things. Look, just from doing an outside bar and a few bars, I've personally learned that I cannot make a system out of this and be happy because it didn't work. It zoomed back through, so maybe there's something new to learn that, ah, sometimes they zoom back through, and then, you know, I can ask, you know, what happens next? You know, whenever I do these exercises, maybe I'll grab the absolute low here and you know, keep an eye on it. But let's let's discover. Outside bar, outside bar. See, we're coming down. Hard down. Engulf back up. Test. Zoom, zoom, and zoom. And right here, listen, I'm just curious. You're never tired of me, Adam? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll keep testing you. Yeah. I'm just curious, and I want you guys to, I'm just, what happens next? This is a movie for me. Now, I'm not going to be able to take this apart in complete detail, because I don't want to keep everybody. I can do this chart, the rest of this chart. It could take me two hours to do it, but I'm going to cover the basics. We're going to do this exercise in many ways, this connecting exercise. But I want to get across my experiences. I'm curious, what happens here? Ah, zoom. Now I'm thinking we're going back through. I'm curious, what happens next? See, I'm not worried that the line isn't perfect. Okay, we're, we're just hovering. Back through. Crack. New lows. Okay. Hard down. And, you know, 
do you guys feel the we gave it a nice shot up here we retested and this market has completely turned on its end and people are running for the exits down here don't sell here you know people are running for the exits down here you can see that people are just running oh my god Ah, another that's interesting I'm just going to mark interesting because we have these these guys tending to show up these these bars reversing the market I don't know what it means I'm just seeing it outside bar higher high higher low I see some tails now whenever I see tails I'm going to mark them why because they're reaching up and finding some sellers here and I'm going to ask well what happens next so whenever I see sellers I'm going to ask what happens next all right holding the sell okay we've just turn those sellers on their head another tail another tail ah so I'm gonna move these guys now like this see that's interesting that's not something I see often see I'm learning here See, I, I just caught myself getting stuck. This is not something I see often, that these tails get beat, run into another tail a little higher. This is something new for me. I'm noting that as we speak right now, right? This, I, I don't usually see that. Of course, it didn't beat it by much, but okay. I'm learning. Ah, zoom, new lows. I'm kind of curious what happened after the last low reversed up what's going to happen after this low might as well mark it too right I got a I got a little press going on here and don't worry if your markings are perfect or right or wrong just see what you see from them this is scary okay we're turning up we're testing these guys, bouncing a little bit, higher highs, higher lows. This looks like we are driving. I'm interested. Hmm. This was one of our clues to the yen long the other week. So I'm watching, testing, testing, testing. Ah, one structure happens to create the next structure so we have this press now pressing upward and we'll get back to the press lessons if you haven't seen them okay so we're back here let's just keep an eye because I'm really curious are these tails going to hold is this outside bar going to hold what's the deal because this move is looking juicy now do you get why I might not buy long here if I was trading this because of this work we're doing yeah look we just popped a low and so I might not if I did I it'd be like the what the Aussie we just looked at if I did I'd be all right I'm buying here for a push and I gotta tell you I'm hit or miss with that sometimes I'm really on about the predicting to go through and sometimes not you guys suddenly get popped on the try in the 240 CAD okay so we're at these tails, we're at these sellers, we're at this. Zoom. Retest. If I had the rest of the day, I'd be literally marking all of this, letting price tell its story. But when you're doing this on your own, go ahead and mark things and 
zoom, retest, because you're reading the story. This is the story, right? This is the story. Yeah, you could sell this for a push, right, Phil? Or you can buy this for a push, and you'd know which one you were doing. You know, you could sell the green or the brown for a push, or you can buy the, all right? So w what options does this leave us with the red now, Phil, related to the press? Type one didn't work. So if we're just looking at this press, we have a few options that we can consider here. And anybody can answer. And if you're listening to the recordings, you know, play along. Don't, you know, the more you engage also just mentally, the more the more you get out of it. But I'm thinking in terms of type one, two, or three mark. And Raj says, well, we, we, there's also the possibility for a type two, okay? This would be a push. A type two would be, okay, we're going to expand, then continue. And a type three would be, you know, a retest. I know I'm going off into trading here, but... No, I'm, I'm just going to follow this. We're just going to discover. You know, just know as you read it. Okay, we're coming down. Tails, tails, tails. We're approaching the low. Tails, tails, tails. We're approaching the low here. And you can mark these little tails, right? This is a little battle going on. See that? This is how I learned price action, guys. This is what I'm getting to when I say we're going to design our own thing. This is how I learned price action. I I learned some basics and then I just started forgetting everything and looking. Okay, this is what a tail is. I see this over and over. This is what a gap is. And I just started looking. And I just started looking. I said, oh, this happens a lot. Oh, I can mark this. I can use this as a reference point. And then I started creating. And it was all very exciting. And if you learn this little exercise, you could teach yourself price action within a year. But as we go, I'm going to kind of guide you through it so you know how to read. And you can even see things that I don't see in here. Because I have not diced out all of price action yet. I have not. But I can do some simple things. Sellers. Aha. Uh -huh. Sellers. Sellers. Zoom sellers. I'm curious. Do we hold the back side now? Right, you're with me, Adam? Do we we just zoom them? Do we hold the back side now? And then where are we going next? Ah, okay, we're testing the back side. This is like a book. This is not a news service about what the Brexit's doing. You're reading this like a book on a daily chart. This is like I have a book in front of me. It's telling a story. And, you know, I'm trying to understand the story. It's trying to get across to me. I'm using swings. Looks like so far the swings are all kind of different sizes. We have this. You know, they're all different sizes. This is, this is my biggest if it makes a new low. So far the swings are all different sizes. And I just got a swap here. Testing. I don't know what's going to happen next. Ah, bouncing. I'm curious. Why is this a reasonable level to mark? Well, because it got zoomed. See it? This is telling us. Literally telling us where, you know, sellers knocked it out after they took it up. It's literally, this is, it's, this is the hidden support and resistance. It's literally telling us this is where they are, right here. Minus the news, minus the effects, minus the alerts, minus the secret sauce. It's telling us. I mean, when you guys get this point, you know, it's a, it's a puckering experience that you, oh, wow, I'm just reading it. It's telling me. We can learn median lines and we can look at these areas, but this is kind of exciting when you yourself say, 
I'm actually reading what they say can't be done. And to tell you the truth, it's not that hard. It's a matter of slowing down, focusing, picking a few consistent things to use like tails, presses, gaps. If you don't like this, then you can use this gap. See? It's not like one is necessarily better than the other. If you don't know what a press is, you use this gap. Okay, let's watch. What's going on? Ah! Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't buy this with your money right now here, no matter what kind of tail swap I've got. See, this is analysis. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't even buy it with your money. Ah, break. All right. So we've learned something here. And this is a dang interesting looking structure. I'm curious, what do we do next? Ah, new lows. Starting on its way back up. And so we also want to, you know, we want to keep an eye on price. And I'm curious, what happens if we get up here? We have a gap here. What happens if we get up here? You know, we can get fancy. We could even draw little multi-pivot lines for the crack. But let's keep it simple. Tail. Pull back. Tail. You see there's a little bit of a little bit of a fight going on in here. Everybody should see there's a little bit of a fight going on in there. And now my eye catches something now that I've gotten this far. Does this stick out for everybody, this tail? Yeah, right? It does. I mean, it's kind of big. It qualifies. It sticks out. Okay. Now, draw your eyes to the left and see if you can see the, the action that maybe produced that, that I missed. Looks like the TME structure. Similar. Similar, right? In the, in the, in the TME, that's a stock we were looking at. Um, in, the, in the TME, Raj, we required this to do what? Zoom, right? Because it was such a good point, we required it to, or at least we were looking at that, to either buy here or require a zoom. By the way, if you've been watching Cake, it's still holding and it came off. We'll get back to that. But draw your eye to the left. Do it with me. Just draw your eyes to the left because now we're in learning mode. We know sellers hit it here because they knocked it off. Now draw your eyes. Okay, there's this gap. There's this gap swap. Ah, see the gap swap and this tail. See, it all kind of matches in here. So you see this, not really a gap swap. It's a little gap, but there's this tail here. So we can watch and see it hold this tail and zoom this tail and retest this tail. So now I learned a little something about the previous tail in this little up move. Now, I don't know if I can use that or not, but I got to tell you, I've used it. I've seen it a hundred times, a thousand times, and I'll mark it. If you don't like the tail, mark the gap. Same thing. But either way, we've proven. Do you see how I just learned something about price action by doing that? I just learned. I learned a little bit earlier over here. Now I learned a little bit over here. And if I didn't catch it the first time, all I have to do is say, oh, look, that's for sure a seller. Or, oh, look, zoom, what's getting zoomed? Ah. Now I can throw this into my experience. Hi, John tail that retested coil April 10th. Yeah, right? And either tail or this, this, this zoom up. But 
there's a there's a feel to this battle in here. There's a feel that we were squishing. Okay? There's a feel we were squishing. And we want to keep getting out of our heads and more into feel. And then a pop, retest, buyers pick it up, boom. They test it, they're not so happy. Crack right there. Just like that. You know, and that's what leads to lines, by the way. You know, this is that little pressure cooker structure we talk about once in a while. And so what happens is this is the crack before a new new low. But we learn that. Okay, that's interesting. And we learn this. This would have been the try. So let's watch. Testing, testing. Do we get a zoom? You know, if I get a zoom through a bunch of stuff here, I might consider buying actually. But I'm learning right now. I have an outside bar. So I'm watching. Does this outside bar hold? Does everybody see? What do these two bars feel like to you? I want to I want to get this across. I know we're going a little late today, but that's all right. We're having fun. Hey, John Seller stacking up at the light green. Yes, obviously. We're kind of curious. John, what's the next question? If the sellers stack up and come off, what's the next question? And does everybody get these two bars right here? Yeah, it, well, number one, we know they held, but number two, the next question, um, John, is do we make new lows? All right, that'll, that'll tell us something very interesting. Good. And Grace says it feels like a swap. Right? Do you feel that? I want you guys to feel these two bars here. Because I will use these for quick entry sometimes, once in a while. There's a swap. Watch. Watch. See, we're turning up. We're turning up. Uh, we're thinking about it. We got a tail. We're, th you know, we're thinking about. We're thinking about holding this line here. See, there's a tail here. We're thinking about holding this line here. There's a. There's an actual feel to this, guys. We're thinking about holding this line, and ah, you see, the, the decision was made this day, right there. That never mind, we're not going to hold that line. And so I just call it a swap, a bar swap, right? You guys have heard me use that, Grace and and John. Yeah, I just call it a swap. You got both buyers and sellers, but right here it's swapped. This was like, boom! I can see this thing. It's swapped. It's going down somewhere. They decided right here in this neighborhood that they didn't want to do that no more. Don't know how we can use that yet, but I want you to be connected at this level. Ah, see them? Now look at them closing on their lows now. See, you got the feel. And then we go back to John's question. Do we make new lows? Lower low. Tails reaching. Do we make new lows? Do we make new lows? I have no idea what's going to happen. Tails. Do we make new lows? I'm going to mark these little tails here, guys. Because they're telling me, oh, we're so much in despair. These guys are in despair. They're in depression right here. They're in depression. They're, they're on the couch, curled up, watching TV for the next three days. They're in depression here. Huh. That's interesting. Current. Do we make new lows? It's hard to count that as a new low. Okay, so that's where we're at. All right, that's where we're at. And this is our major swing. Now let's clean this up a little bit because now that I'm somewhat connected, I haven't traded a daily in some time, but I have nothing against trading dailies. Let me hit my markings again. Now remember what we said about swings? They were all getting kind of kind of wonky. 
different sizes, all of a sudden it looks like price has organized itself somehow. All of a sudden it looks like price has organized itself in some way. I mean, you can see it. All of a sudden the swings are the same. And this is something very interesting right here. Okay, it's something very interesting. And the other thing I want to note is on a relative scale, for you guys that have been around, what is this? What kind of bar is that? Because that's the most interesting looking thing on my chart right now. It's a tail. Thank you, Phil, right? That's a tail. That's a tail and a half. Probably go to a weekly chart and see it. But that's the most interesting piece of structure on my chart right now. That's kind of interesting, but that's interesting. So, I feel sorry for those who were picking at longs for an entire year. Sorry, guys. All right. Hey, Stephen, can I make you? Yes, I could. I could. We could talk, but yeah, I could. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up, but um, email me with what's on your mind there. I just noticed you and go to meeting. Okay, thanks. So let's, let's watch this. We have some very interesting looking things going on here. I don't know what happens, but Stephen, by the way, doesn't this kind of, kind of squishing like our, like our oil chart, isn't it? Starting to anyways. So I'm just going to kind of leave this and we'll keep this on our radar guys. Okay. We'll keep this on our radar. So that's just a, a connection lesson. That's all. We're going to work this into our design routine. And if you take the time to do a little bit of that, you know, you get a little more connected to your market. So today was really fun. We did a whole lot of interesting things and, you know, pretty much thanks to some good questions and some good work. And I hope you, you followed this Aussie out in some form, whether you made money, lost money, didn't trade it. I, I'm really juiced when, when people learn and you know, you, get per, you email me, I know you get personal insights. You're like, wow. And so I really love that because this is seeable. It's hard, but let's learn to read. We're going to, we're going to work on tightening up this design and go from there. So this link, We'll work again on Wednesday, okay, guys? And by Wednesday, I'll have a little more news about the site and all that and when you guys can fully register. And I appreciate everybody here again. Thank you. It's always a lot of fun. Learning does juice us up, doesn't it? I learned today. Thanks, Raj, Ricardo. So I'll see you guys. If you have any questions about things, let me know. You'll get a link to this recording later today. Thank you, Grace. And you guys all have a good weekend. And we're not here on Monday.